What do you see when you look at this? It's beautiful, isn't it? Actually, this is one of the many processes nature has of intricate behavior that has this beautiful visual outcome. It would almost make us believe that there's some grand design behind it. Something that's keeping track of all the movements and orchestrating the system as a whole. Well, there's not. This intricate behavior is all created on the level of the individual. One bird can do that when he's got friends. <laughs> so now you guys might be thinking, all right, a guy with a beard talking about bird behavior, he must be a biologist or a bird fanatic. Uh, I'm sorry for your bird lovers out here. I'm not a biologist, and I'm also not going to talk about bird behavior. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. And what I do is I create light installations. And in these installations, I control every single part. I design the spectacle from start to finish, and I know exactly what's going to happen. Inside of this installation, you might find something like this. One big computer that's controlling the whole system. And I'm controlling that computer. I perform with it. And what it means is that while I'm performing, performing, there are no surprises to me. I know what's going to happen, and I can't be surprised myself. But you know who still surprises me every time? Those birds. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you guys on this one. Uh, so you can count the cables. They're a lot. <clears throat> so, losing the control, building something new, that's what I wanted. I wanted to something that surprised me. Uh, and what I was thinking, can I create this flock of birds? Can I, can I do what nature does when they make birds do what they do when they flock? Could I create my own individual being that, when put in a group, will create a new thing with a beautiful visual outcome? Could I lose this control and surprise myself? Luckily for me, biologists have already come, came up with the rules, the simple rules that would mimic this flocking behavior. And looking at these rules, I realized that those rules are actually quite simple. If you look at the rules for one bird, those rules would be small enough to program them into a small microprocessor. So here's what we did. Every animal needs a brain, a body, a means of communication, and a behavior. So for our animal, our being, we used, um, for as its brain, we used a microprocessor and sensors. For its uh, communication, we used a radio frequency transceiver. For its uh, energy source, a battery. And for its body, a printed circuit board with a wooden shell. And now the behavior. All animals, or, or pretty much anything here, has a set of rules which govern their lives. So just as, as, as we, we needed to set some ground rules. And the, rules, the, the, the first rules were something like, listen to your neighbor, observe your surroundings. If you hear something, respond. And if it's been quiet for a long time, make up a message. And then, if there's nothing around, go to sleep. They run on batteries, right? Yes. So we had the ground rules there. Now we needed to give them the power of cho to, cho to choose. And the way we did this is we created many messages they could pick from. And they could pick from them in every order or, or means that they found necessary. And also, now there were 
allowed to ignore their neighbor or to not speak when they felt like it. They did always have to go to sleep, though. No discussion. Um, and then we went one step forward further. Because in nature, nothing is alike, right? All, bird, all birds are different, we are different, everything's different. We're all sort of the same, but not exactly the same. And we wanted that too. So the first individual we made, we asked him to design his, also, his own shell. We gave him a base shape to work with, and we, we had him create variations upon this shell. And all those variations became the housings for all of its friends to come. And now they didn't need us anymore, right? They would do what they would do, and I couldn't orchestrate or choreograph. And I think it's also time that you guys meet the individual before we go to the flock. Uh, here it is, the pixie. And now we were at the stage of multiplying this individual. 1,500 of them we created. All different, all unique, also uniquely looking. And it was also time to pick its habitat. We picked a forest in the Dutch province of Drenthe, and we installed them in the trees. And then it was time to see what they would, how they would behave in nature. Exactly two weeks ago, we woke them up, and here's what happened. They talked. They made up their own messages. They behaved as individuals. But most of all, they, they were, became part of their colony to live, to live as one in a sum greater than their parts. And finally, I was able to sit there and enjoy something I made, not knowing what was going to happen, and see something new. And you know what surprised me the most? When it was hot or cold, or when it was rainy or foggy, their behavior changed. And that made me think. When seasons change, would their behavior change? And if we created more of them, would they split up into smaller colonies? What if, how would they interact, interact with uh, human life forms? What if I create another digital colony and put it next to it? Would they become friends? But also, it made me think, how would it feel like, what, do, what would it feel like for us if we design our cities in a similar manner? Imagine streetlights behaving like pixies, right? Imagine they could interact with you. I think all I'm trying to say is, how would our cities feel, or wouldn't it be nice if our cities would feel more like a forest. <laughs>